for long i have received many requests on study approach for ems exam particularly for the pathology portion now i can discuss about this in two context i have been a top 100 ranker in the ems long the long back 13 years before and at that time the approach was a little bit different but now the as the question patterns have changed and more become like usmle or international pattern you need to uh, revise your approach also for the examination the most important thing i feel to to rank in the top 100 what you require is to keep an open minded approach for learning you just don't just study for exam but just try to also to learn the subject so i'm coming to the pathology in a while but the most important thing is that uh, that there should be a drive and desire to from within to learn the subject well not just to answer the questions but also if you learn it well obviously you can answer the question as a by product it would happen naturally so that's the most important part at the beginning for pathology i feel you need to emphasize on certain portions like uh, in aims exams i have noted that there is a lot of emphasis on systemic pathology part particularly for the renal pathology skin pathology msk musculoskeletal system git so so you cannot just concentrate on general pathology and most of the time people feel that uh, pathology they mostly concentrate i have seen on general pathology but pathology is not a, only about general pathology uh, and aims uh, as an institute has a full fledged pathology lab and other things actually it's a well advanced setup so obviously the questions are framed accordingly uh, from for it so the areas which i feel that you should concentrate on the system part first you should begin with hematology hematology you should have a brief overview of the anemias uh, nutritional anemia identification anemia megaloblastic anemia you should read about uh, the thalassemias particularly hemolytic anemias thalassemias and sickle cell anemia diagnostic the approach of the thalassemia particularly the hplc high performance liquid chromatography you should know them in and out uh, then you should know about, well about the classification of the hemolytic anemia uh, then the most important part would be leukemias and the lymphomas leukemias you should know thoroughly about all aml cml cll how do you diagnose them what are their markers uh, particularly for bcr avl one in the case of cml uh you should know about the myeloproliferative neoplasms particularly polycythemia vera uh then also the bleeding and coagulation disorders uh, you should be thorough about the causes of the thrombocytopenia various causes of the thrombocytopenia itp and ttp and also heparin induced thrombocytopenia you should read about uh, hemophilia and von willebrand disease uh in the git coming to the git your emphasis would be from esophagus you should read about barrett esophagus various causes of esophagitis peel esophagitis uh herpes simplex esophagitis cmb esophagitis uh then you should also read about the esophageal squamous cell carcinoma and the adenocarcinoma from the stomach would be emphasis would be on peptic ulcer disease and also on uh gastric carcinoma particularly the two variants diffuse variant and intestinal variant you should read about their morphologic features you should read about gist gastrointestinal stomal tumor their markers like dog 1 cd 1 and 7 uh you should read about the gastric lymphomas though they comprise only 5% then intestine you should read about the gastric polyposis syndromes you should read about colon cancer uh you should read about the intestine is very important part is uh, crohn disease and ulcerative colitis there is inflammatory bowel disease you be very thorough about them uh, and then also there are malabsorption disorders which are very important particularly uh, whipple's disease then and more important is celiac disease i feel uh, is very important also to know particularly the biopsy findings in the celiac disease that there is a progressive planting of the villi there is a reversal of the creep villus ratio you should understand all these concepts renal pathology is another important area which is uh, very much useful for times exam and particularly the glomerular pathology part you should know the various causes of the nephrotic syndrome and nephritic syndrome 
particularly important ones I feel minimal changes is you should know about membranous glonephritis, membrane or proliferative glonephritis, uh, then the post infectious glonephritis, which is the newer term for the post epigraphic glonephritis. You should know about the rapidly progressive glonephritis, the three subtypes of the RPG and, uh, and IG nephropathy, various cystic diseases of the kidney, that is another high yield area, and also the renal tumors both renal cell carcinoma and its variants as well as the pediatric renal tumors you should know these things uh, in details what i feel uh, coming to the neuropathology part neuropathology part one key area would be uh, tumors cns tumors uh, starting from glioblastoma to meningioma to ependymoma to oligodendroglioma primary cns lymphoma and the metastatic these are the key areas which would be asked and in the peripheral nerve cell tumors, they will be asking about the schwannoma and the neurofibroma. So if you uh, go through this neural tumors, that are there is another area which is quite productive for this kind of examinations. And also you have to read out the neurodegenerative disorder, uh, particularly the Alzheimer as well as the Parkinson disease and their findings. Uh, then I would move to the disease of the MSK musculoskeletal system, particularly high yield area I feel is bone tumors. You should know about the classification of the bone tumors. Certain tumors are bone forming and some of them are benign like osteoosteoma, osteoblastoma, some of them are malignant, some specifically osteosarcoma which is malignant, some are chondroid or cartilage forming tumors like some of them are benign like chondroblastoma, chondromyxoid fibroma, osteochondroma and some chondrosarcoma is uh, malignant and you also need to read about the Ewing sarcoma and giant cell tumor of bone osteoclastoma and also about the metastasis. That's another area and metabolic bone diseases, particularly the bone disease with hyperparathyroidism and osteoporosis, which is another high yield area I feel. Then uh, endocrine, endocrine thyroid pathology is highly important, particularly to read about thyroiditis and uh, I would mention about Hashimoto is very important, Dequer 1, Riedel, these are the usual stops which you need to read. Uh, from the malignancy part, you need to read about five things, papillary carcinoma of thyroid, follicular carcinoma of thyroid, medullary carcinoma of thyroid, anaplastic carcinoma of thyroid and the lymphoma of the thyroid. In the parathyroid, you need to you know about the primary, secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism as well as the causes of hypoparathyroidism. These are the high ladies. Adrenal is another important area. Adrenal, I think the Cushing syndrome and Addison disease, uh, these are the usual area which is often asked. And pituitary also there are things, cause of hyperpituitarism, hyperpituitarism, c -Hans syndrome, uh, cause of hyperprolactinemia. They could give some case study based on this. Uh, then the other modules, the respiratory, I feel uh, COPD is highly productive. Uh, asthma, the changes, morphological changes in the asthma and the lung cancer. Uh, particularly, I should go through about the small cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma of lung, and also about the carcinoma. The recent changes in the classification, WHO classification of lung tumors, these are very high yield area, I feel. Uh, then we need to a uh, CVS cardiovascular system, vasculitis, the classification of vasculitis, then aneurysm, uh, mycotic aneurysm, triple A abdominal aortic aneurysm. Then you should also read about the uh, vascular tumors like hemangioma, angiosarcoma, Kaposi sarcoma. Cardiac is uh, the high areas are uh, rheumatic heart diseases, rheumatic fever as well as you have to read out the ischemic heart diseases, the changes, the cardiac biomarkers and all those stuff, the morphological changes which you see in acute migratory infarction. Uh, then also neuromuscular junction disorder, which I missed to tell, you should go through about them, myasthenic gravis and other stuff. And uh, other modules, fundamental, that is the, uh, the general pathology part. The general pathology part, part, you have to read out the necrosis, apoptosis, all their, Classi uh, classification, dystrophic and metastatic classification, their differences. You have to know about the pathways of apoptosis, the molecules, pro-apoptotic, anti-apoptotic molecules. Uh, you need to know about the 
inflammation details particularly the mechanism of acute inflammation the vascular changes and the cellular changes a cellular changes a lot of things could be asked particularly the leukocyte adhesion deficiency syndromes and all those steps the sequences which are followed but like uh, margination rolling adhesion diabetes chemotaxis and the uh, recognition phagocytosis so these things could be asked in different way happy chronic inflammation particular subset important is granuloma and granulomatous inflammation this thing and also you should uh, go through about the genetics the basics of the genetics basics of immunological disorder autoimmunity is very important as well as some autoimmune disorders particularly the sle and also you should read about the amyloidosis in details and the stains are very important particularly the stains as with amyloidosis stains to detect funguses these things are important in transfusion transfusion pathology part is also important you should know the indications components where they are used should have a basic idea about them which i missed to well i telling about the hematology part and the other module which i skipped actually reproductive reproductive the high yield area would be definitely tumors in the male <coughs> prostate cancer dystrophin and prostate hyperplasia you should read about the testicular cancers in details <coughs> and also the tumor markers which are associated with it i discussed it few days back also and uh, in females uh, the uterine corpus there will be endometriosis adenomyosis uterine tumors leiomyoma leiomyoma sarcoma which you should read and also you should read about the ovarian tumors so when tumors is a very high area so these are the things actually so the most important thing i feel that uh, you should focus from the very beginning to understand the topics well to have a rock solid concept conceptual clarity should be there because if you know the subject well then you can answer any question actually and uh, you that that would occur spontaneously naturally you don't have to do it like that so this is a video actually i made which i felt uh, as i that i should make it because i have received few request to prepare this and this is some ideas which are coming my mind if more ideas come i'll make another video thank you very much